you've been well. Yeah, no, lunch is working. What can you I know, I've seen. Yeah, so, um, okay. So, um, thank you again for making the time. Um, right. I'll, I'll just get straight to the very first question. Finding out what your best definition of activism is, whether that be an original uh, uh, conception that you've kind of defined yourself or an adopted one uh, that you feel best suits the term. So my, what would I say is activism? I just think someone that's out there, day in, day out, flying the flag for whatever cause that they feel is important to them. That's that's my definition. I don't even know if that's a textbook definition. Do you know what I mean? So don't be, and if somebody doesn't come to me for like Google and um, Cambridge definition, but yeah, that's what I think. That's what I think it is for me. I think sometimes textbook definitions leave people more, more lost and distanced from the concept yeah. um, than definitions such as the, the, the simplified version that people can actually access and understand. So uh, yeah, fantastic. The, the next question then is, you know, in terms of your activism, um, how do you feel that your life has been guided or informed by this idea, the definition that you um, just shared, uh, consciously or unconsciously? It's funny because I, I would never even put activism as what I do. Like, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even see myself as an activist. But you're so, doing it. I, but I never saw myself. I still don't. When somebody say like, yeah, Shereen's the activist, I'm like, who are they talking about? Because that's not me. This is what I'm saying. This yeah. is what we need to come away from, though. Yeah. Because activism, you're, you're doing it. And no, I think do you know, yeah, do you know what it is? I think, and this is really interesting, isn't it? Because it's almost like, what do you, what do you have in your, what do you hold in your mind when somebody says somebody is an activist, right? So if I, I think of, um, for, for me personally, I think of um, young Greta. Yeah. Just, just, so for me, I'm thinking to myself, I'm just a mum of two kids in Kent. That's a bit gobby, yeah. do you know what I mean? So. Um, I, I've never connected the two. So in theory, my own definition, I probably am my own definition. Do you know what I mean? From that point Absolutely. of view. But I've never connected that that's me. It doesn't make a difference, but it's just interesting that I've never, I never, I'm always taken aback when people call me an activist and I'm like, am I? I don't see myself as an activist, but you know, it's just this idea, it's almost like, Like if you're an activist, you don't have a proper job. So this is my okay. social class show. It's showing the class, itself. Yeah. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? That's what you're. That I mean, from. activism. I always say, then people don't have time. Yeah. Don't have time. Yeah. Right. You know. So yeah. it's 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 just it's this it's almost this concept of for me activism in my mind when I think about it from that doesn't necessarily equate to making a difference it equates to just making a lot of noise I'm not saying that's a bad thing yeah but because my the way I'm wired my personality is driven I'm very action orientated very task focused and I like to do tangible stuff so I think my um uh disconnect between seeing myself as an activist in my mind I'll be thinking about much more than that yeah do you understand what you, you see yeah. what I mean so it's almost as if it's, it's what the pejorative the yeah, it's like what the label. What does the label? What does the label allow you to be able to do versus versus what it doesn't? And how yeah. much does that confine, like who I think I am? So you know, I talk about myself as an advocate. You know, of always pushing. So I, I use the phrase advocacy quite a lot. Yeah. Um, but activism, <laughs> activism, activism is funny enough, isn't it? Because now you're gonna laugh. Activism sounds far like somebody who's far more noisy, right? And clearly, I am. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, somebody's noisy, somebody's consistent, you know, day in and day out from the mountaintops, yeah. you know, so it's not that there's a negative connotation to it. It's just that I've never seen myself in that. But I still haven't caught up with what I do now versus the Shireen of, you know, pre the summer of 2020, if that makes sense, because like nobody paid any attention to what I had to say. As did you know what I mean? Even when I was paid. This yeah. didn't pay no attention. So, you know, this it's it's a little bit of that catching up almost, you know. So yeah. When I think back, um, like there's so many, there's so many layers to this. Um, but when I think about when I first decided to kind of 
tell my story in 20 minutes, right? It wasn't planned, right? So it wasn't planned. Um, pretty much had a traumatic breakdown. Not about saying it, because if, if, if you look at the video, my day one video, and look at my videos now, other than stylistically, because obviously I've got more practice, right? There's no difference. So you wouldn't think to yourself, you just think this is another one of Shereen's videos. So people are always quite shocked when they see it because they expect to see me like, oh my God, you know, that came yeah. later. That yeah. wasn't my first video. The issue wasn't in me saying what I had to say. The issue was sharing it, right? So yeah. my thing that I had to go through um, was this whole uh, idea of like, what's your biggest fear? And I go, oh, you know, but actually what was my biggest fear, right? That white people weren't going to pay me no attention. Yeah. Because I spent... 20 years almost up until that point trying to fight claw duck dive turn the other cheek left right left right you know all of that business to get to what I perceived as as the as you know the success whatever that was and then actually when I don't even like it because for you know for lots of different reasons yeah. um so so because it was it was accidental not deliberate so it's not like you know I just i you know, there was, it was a, what do, what do they call it? It's breaking point. Um, an author I, I did with US, he talks about the same thing that got him involved in kind of this. And he was like, you just hit that breaking point. Um, but I also think there wasn't anything in that I cared about enough to step past my own fear of judgment. Yeah. So that's why I don't think it was always there. Yeah. I just think, I think, I had to, the two things had to be created right. There had to be something that I cared about. So I had to consciously identify what that was. The other thing is it had to be an unconscious decision, not a conscious decision. Because if I was keep making it a conscious decision, I wouldn't be here. I'd, still, I'd, 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 be, I'd be here like doing my little HR consultancy, still trying to like fly around with crumbs. I, I wouldn't be speaking out. Yeah. Is that a conscious decision? Yeah, absolutely. You know? all my ancestors telling me for god's sake Shireen do you know what I mean we weren't enslaved people for you to be carrying on like next generation yeah, probably yeah. right yeah. So, yeah. and the one time yeah. I listened you could you know there's probably so many things that you could you could say you know but it, it was an unconscious decision not a conscious decision mm. like I just had to I'm gonna know? say yeah and, and, and I that resonates massively with me because even doing what I'm doing now with the Black Knowledge Society, um, and it sounds so cheesy and cliche, but it's almost like one of those, you know, it called me, um, you know, I, I, I did not go looking for it. It <laughs> called me, it was, it was that kind of thing. Um, and now I happen now to find myself in the throes of um, this world, this organization. It's a life force all of its own that I'm now having to nurture and protect and look after and develop and evolve. And it's so, um, and I can't stop it because it is very much an intrinsic part of me. You but know? on the wave now, yes, so that's how I think about it, you know, because I think there comes a point when, you know, to some extent we've been standing at the shore debating or not whether to dip our toe in the water. And what's happened is we've now been thrown in the water. Yeah. We now recognise not only we're we not drowning, we can swim. And actually we can swim pretty well, mm. meaning that we can always follow the way the tide is going without feeling really at risk. Yeah. Be time's going to be uncomfortable. You know, literally the analogy, you're going to get water in your mouth, down, eh, but we're still going, you're right. So yeah. we're still, and that's how I feel. So even still waters still move right so yeah. even if even if I was going oh do you know what it would still be carrying me anyway yeah. because the water is my purpose in that analogy you know yeah. so and that's why I think um but it wasn't conscious mm. no you know that, that makes mean? sense that yeah. makes absolute sense um, and, and that's very powerful and I think um is also a form of encouragement as well for a lot of the younger ones who feel that it, it must necessitate this uh, sort of purposeful, thoroughly thought through oh. idea to you just know what? do I, I, to do I something. actually think, I think it's the opposite. I actually think, like I would say to anybody, you know, people go, oh my gosh, I would say, look, I'm only just turned 40 this year. So you could argue it took me 40 years. It, the time hasn't for me time is you know like it's there's no con concept from that point of perspective but 
sometimes it, you will find your moment when everything aligns yeah. and it's not about everything aligning for it to happen it's aligning to the point that you're ready to see and I think there's still and I think what's really interesting about this this um time we're in um at the moment is I think there's so many people particularly so many black people actually from this particular view who see um they'll probably see what you're doing they'll probably see um like what I'm doing, um, ancestral voices who I discovered by accident because oh I'm my god! And now, now I, I, I saw your message. Side point. This side point. So I sent it to my my family, and I was like, "Listen." Then my sister messaged me. She was like, "Oh my god, where did you find this?" Yeah. And I was like, "Tell me." And then before you know it, you're like this. Yeah. Like let me out. I like, how, where's the sun? Like, I need to come out of here. Like, how did I even get here? You know, before you know it. Down the warren. Down the warren. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm like, dude, also, I'm like pouring libation on concrete if I've got concrete guards. You know what I mean? You know, before you know it. Before you know it. I've got, oh, so listen, I'm just here. So, you know, but the point is. Saying Ashe, left, right, and centre. Okay. My partner's like, what? I was like, don't worry about that. Okay. Do you know what I mean? My, my thought's like, Mom, what are you saying? I was like, listen. Don't watch that. Yeah, so you start, so before you know it, right, and I think it's one of those things where, um, in you know, clearly I know you haven't always been doing what you're doing, I haven't always been doing, mm-hmm. but there's, there, there is this thing about what we're seeing now, it's always been here. Yes. Right, so now, but you have to be in the right space to be able to see what's always been here. 100%. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? you That's have, why you, I'm, I'm not... You have to be in agreement. Right. So, something has had... Something's got to, you know, and maybe, um, like, for my, in my instance, for me, is because, because I'm so analytical in my thinking, um, that analytical thinking that I have is also can hold me back, particularly when it comes to my spiritual growth particularly when it comes for me hearing um, messages from my spiritual guides who have been talking to me for ages, but I'm hard to hear in because mm. I half believe and don't believe. And then I want to try and find out. Then I want more signals, but I'm not ready for the big signals because yeah. then I'm going to have a heart attack. So they don't give me anything <laughs> to hear, right? Do you know what I mean? Because they know she, she, she's not ready, right? <laughs> and then I'm like... I'm just visualising all of this in my you're mind. Right. <laughs> You see what you did? This is this is just me. I, I know it because they told me. They told me I know this. Do you know what I mean? And so there's things I'm not very good at asking for help. Mm. I'm not very good at asking for help, so I've got to work on that. Yeah. You know, so all of these things is, but they've always been here. You know, my ancestor that keeps an eye on me from multi generations, she's always been here, but right. I've just never been ready to see. Yeah. You know, and I think so. You know, if people are thinking to themselves, um dare I say from a place of envy to a certain point. So going back to my thing about where I think some black people might be thinking is they're like, I wish I could fight for the cause, black liberation, self determination I wish I could do my equivalent of, you know, the Black Knowledge Society. I wish I could do the equivalent of what she's doing. I wish I could do, I wish I could do. But what I would urge people to understand is because it was unconscious, I didn't plan any of this. I didn't know that I was going to not just record one video and now I'm on like video 150 as of this morning or whatever stupid number it is Mm -hmm. in that context. And then I've got all these other ones and these other ones. I didn't know I was going to record the videos. I didn't know um, I was going to be featured in Forbes. I didn't know my LinkedIn followers would shoot up something crazy. I had no idea. And because I had no idea, it meant I wasn't artificially trying to engineer an outcome. All I was doing, all I said is, this is my version of being set free. I've got, I've got to do this now. I don't know what this is. And I remember in that my next video, and I said to people, like, I'm just going to take you on a journey with me. I've got no idea. And this is what I said. I've got no idea where I'm going to end up. You know, it's my year. My year anniversary is on the 31st of May for doing my first video. Um, and so all the things that I've, you know, that I've managed to do, 
And I'm thinking, you know what, next week I'm facilitating a panel with the mayor of Indiana, like Shereen Daniels in Kent. What the heck, you know? So yeah. all of these things, all of the people that, you know, we get to meet, you know, connecting with people like you, discovering ancestral voices on Instagram, you know, finding, you know, individuals like Sace, Holmes, Lewis, and, you know, meaning connect and catch laugh on WhatsApp every so often just to let you know, I see you disturbing the pieces. Like, yeah. I see you still disturbing the pieces. You know, all these things. But I didn't sit down and write my smart objectives. Absolutely. <laughs> right? Oh, yes. Yes. So, so, so there's, um, so I think sometimes there might be a pressure that comes with trying to live up to an ideal of what you think is activism. And what I'm saying is don't watch, don't watch what you think it shouldn't, Textbook shouldn't definition, be. definition, yeah. Right, Does it, it doesn't matter. All, all you have to say to yourself is, is listen, and if you want to try and like engineer the moment a little bit, a little bit more, not because it's never going to be, but just start to think about what are the wrongs that you fundamentally is going to push you to, do, to confront your biggest fear just so you can be part of a solution. Do you know what I mean? Just because you're, a black person or you're a person of you know African Caribbean her heritage or whatever it doesn't necessarily mean your fight is going to be about racism that's my fight but you know my my um my work in this is very personal to me because it's atoning for some of the guilt I felt for not fighting for myself and not fighting for the people that look like me and the fact that I have the professional knowledge and I assimilated and integrated so there's yeah. some shame that I feel from that that, that this is my way this is my way of of readdressing that balance not because anybody's told me to but that's the way that I positively channel that guilt because I understand you know that's and that's probably why I'm more um because of the context of the work I do I'm far more I'm very very challenging for people because people like Jesus Christ Shireen like Lord have mercy you are you really going to keep talking about white supremacy yes I am I am but I'm very empathetic with it. That's why I have so many white people that still listen because mm -hmm. what I'm saying is I was ignorant. I am still ignorant on so many other things. So who can I sit here and say, you, Mary and John are X, Y, Z when my shit's not together? Completely. Do you understand what I'm you. saying to you? And I know some people, there's other but, you know, everyone horses for courses, but there are other people that will burn down Babylon and all the people in there purely mm -hmm. for their skin colour. Yeah. But my thing is, well, you could levy that argument for me then, because for all of this time, it's took me till now to start saying something. So if you're judging them, you're also judging me. Yeah. If I'm judging them, I can't judge them and not judge myself. Which is very different. So and for me, that means you've got to come with a... A level of humility and re re and what's the word remember that people are you know are humans and it's not it's not about making excuses but it's to recognize that just like we said this for a lot of people for whatever reason whoever you are whatever um problems that you want to be part of the solution is we don't all universally wake up ready to go and take on the world ready to understand what has made the world so sick you have to go through a journey of discovery and curiosity and challenge and deep introspection, you know, and tap into all those things that you might have up here dismissed. So, and that is very different to, I think, um, preaching from a, from a place that basically says like, your shit, your shit and your shit and you need to fix up. Absolutely. Because if, if everything is about you, 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 if I'm sitting there, I'm going to go, but what are you? Are you telling me I'm rubbish? Are you telling me I'm this? Are you telling me I've got to step up and do that? But then how are you role modeling that you've applied that same principle to yourself? And I think that's where we go wrong when we're trying to push for change and trying to influence, because I think sometimes we get so caught, this, do you know what I mean? And I have many conversations with people who'd be like, no stream, but you know, the seconds that you show a hint of whatever else it is. And I said, no, people don't want to be patronized. And I said, you got to remember, ir irrespective of your skin color, nobody wants to be made feel less than, right? Nobody wants to feel like they're stupid. 
No, so you know all these things because we don't. Nobody wants to be patronized, right? So I can be really challenged. I can tell people to fix up and I go, listen, this is some bullshit. So come on now, we need to, we need to get shit together, yeah. right? But I'm also very challenging of myself. And, but I choose to show that as well. So the reason why I can get away sometimes with, with pushing people to the ends of the earth Right. And I'll be like, well, you know what, you know, here's another thing we've got to talk about. And, you know, this is like feminist movement and white women. And, and, and this, this is another thing we've got to talk about is because. I also show that the, in the work that the inside work that I've got to do on myself, the, the reflections that I have. And there's a lot of black people that don't like that. Oh, because they, they always feel like, you know, you're being too hard on yourself or you're not. I'm not being too hard on myself. What I'm being is honest. Because you, you can't maintain this. Now we're getting into consciously now. If, you're gonna, if you got here accidentally, not really accidentally, but you know what I mean, you got here, you got here accidentally. But if you've decided this is my space now and I'm bedding into this space, you've got to do that with authenticity. And authenticity means you've got to acknowledge that not every day is, is sunshine. Right. And palm trees. Right. You know, not every day, I'm not an expert. I'm not a, I'm, I'm a student who is good at sharing my learnings. That's what I am. I'm not a teacher like that. Even though people say, no, but you're help teaching us. No, what I'm doing is I'm sharing. Yeah. Because as I'm learning, I'm just sharing with you. So what's happening is you're going on the same journey at the same time as me. Whereas educators, they've been on this journey and then they're now sharing with the world from a position of expertise. And half of it's expertise because I've got my company, but... I'm, I'm the mom and the individual first who just yeah. realized the world that I, the way the world is wired is not the way I thought it was. Yeah. Now that is very profound. I think a lot, a lot of what you said there, um, Shireen, for me, um, especially around the authenticity um, and when it comes to actually, you know, okay, understanding now the path that you're on, but with that, weighing that um, in, in, in a place of balance, because I think it's always about balance, to be able to actually demonstrate that, okay, yes, I am now recognized as this figure, but I do not allow that position, that magnification of the rest of the world um, place over me um, to obscure my ability to recognize the need for that humility, um, and also, um, the other thing that you mentioned as well is that to patronize other people and to constantly point out their faults, um, at some point, what you will find is that that in itself will not only exacerbate the people, um, and, and, and at some point people will actually just go off you. I think in terms of the work, what that does for you personally as well, the, the, the damage, the destructive nature of that kind of approach um, is very, very corrosive. And, and you inadvertently will actually find yourself bearing the consequences and the damage out of that because nothing good or nothing that is um, activism in its purest sense, if you like, should ever be a destructive force um, to, to anyone else. It shouldn't, yeah. and it shouldn't, and I think there's a difference. There's another thing as well, I think, which is really important, and I think is is that it shouldn't feel vengeful or angry. And what I mean by that is, is that for me, everything is about layers of consciousness, mm -hmm. right? So when we're talking about fear and shame and embarrassment, that's low level. Right. So I'm not saying give everyone a pass. That's not what I'm saying. But when as you start to rise, I think I'm, I'll am i I'm, I'm be, be happy with the level seven, you know, out of level 11, if there is 11. But you know what I mean? So as you start to kind of come out of this. So when I started off this, I, I very, very low because like I was upset. I was, you can see it. It's not the first one, but as I started to go. So yeah, I was okay. literally, you know, and I would say anyone who watches probably like my first 15 videos, it's almost like a purging. Mm. all that kind of um that negative energy I can see it in my face I was like washed out I was gray and I was you know all the rest of it so it's like literally like a purging yeah 
And then as I'm starting to learn and, and you know, and reach it, and I, and I know in myself, because I didn't even have time and capacity for joy in that mo- in, in that time. It took, it took me quite a long time for the Shireen of, you know, old. Yeah. To come back into this new, you know, into this new space. Um, and I think maybe an act, an aspect of activism, if, as you said, if we're gonna t- if we're gonna think about it from a magnitude point of view, is the ability to um, influence the many rather than a few, right? So I'm I'm one to many with what I do. It doesn't the many you can define the many as you want, whether it's five people, 10, 15, it doesn't matter, but one to many. Yeah. However, I'm very conscious that out of that one to many, I'm not going to please everybody. Listen, I still have people that don't don't like I do this. They don't like um, that I talk about racism and play music. They don't like that I'm so casual in my dress. They feel like because I run my own company that I should be portrayed in a certain way. They don't like my red hair. They don't like my, you know, I can list. Yeah. But I said to myself, again, the conscious decision now, you're going to do this, you're going to do this in your way. So what are the ways that I need to do that? So I need to make sure that my feet don't leave the ground. Absolutely. You know? Authenticity. You, know, you, you got, your feet got to be to, and li- in my sense, literally, I get my grounding from the earth, you know, which is why I need to move to the African continent because I need to be barefoot, apparently. Yeah. Oh, we got told. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go, I'm going to go, find my way there. Um, so I need to, <laughs> you know, so I've got, you know, so we've got, I've got to be grounded. Um, I have to do it my way to maintain the consistency. Absolutely. Um, I have to be riding the way rather than feeling like every single day I'm battling because to some, this is always going to be hard work. Like it's always going to be hard and it's emotionally draining. The freedom that I have that I never had when I was in my corporate career. But also what happens is you can see the people who do what they do for the love of what they do versus those that feel like they have to and every day is a battle to get themselves understood every day is a battle to get people to listen to get people to do you can you can hear it you can sense it you can that energy that says that you have to right my energy says you can if you want to it's choice what i'm giving you is a choice I'm giving you take it or leave it energy, yeah. right? So if you're with me, amazing. We'll have a great time. We'll learn some stuff. We'll probably fuck up, but we'll keep on going. Yeah. Not about skin color. This is just about those people who wanted to be part of the solution. Come with me. This because this is this is where we need to get to. But also, by the way, don't get it twisted. My priority is black people, so I'm not here right. to pander. Right to whiteness is, 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 is that I'm not here to trip over my words. I'm not here to apologize because of the fact that I am so focused on that. So if you understand the rules of engagement. Then we're going to get along just fine. Me and yeah. you can deal. Yeah, for sure. Do you understand for what sure. I'm saying? And that's the difference. And I think, so therefore when, sometimes when people might see all that we have, all of these people kind of coming in and they're going, but I don't under, I don't understand how Esther's getting access to all these people. I don't understand why all these people are paying attention to Shreen. It's because there's a vibrational energy that you operate at Trust that people me. feel drawn to. Yeah. See, that, that for me is the most powerful point. And it's funny actually, because I was um, talking on um, the radio yesterday um, about, the the meet the last meeting that we had the last Zoom, um, and, and very much talking about for me, the way that I now look at our cosmology as African peoples is that it has to be that bedrock because it, it's very much about what you're saying in the same um, breath, Shireen, that the work that you're doing, the motivation for it, the inspiration for it, needs to come from a healthy, balanced place a place of love, essentially, where what you're giving out actually um, emits that love. Because if not, what you are giving out is um, bile, is hatred, is, is dangerous, is divisive. It's, it's, but it's also, it's low level and people, <clears throat> and people feel it. And there's, there's almost as well, I think, um, what's really interesting is I, because I apply like my professional knowledge like 
the business side into everything that I do. So there's all these concepts. Nothing is by accident, even though it might look accidental. It's like nothing is by accident. But we are also moving into a, we are in a, in a world now where people want to know who you are mm. before they buy into your cause and what you're trying to do. This is the same conversation that can be applied for um, people running their own business, people who you know are trying to do their own side hustle and trying to get people interested. So if it's not coming from, and it's not that it's not coming from a good place because people don't consciously think like that, but <clears throat> if people aren't thinking and taking a step back and going, am I pushing this? Goes back to our first point that we were talking about being carried away by the water right so if I stop moving I know I will still be carried in this direction anyway yeah because there's a there's a natural synergy with where I am <clears throat> but if you're not in that space if you stop do you feel like you're going to sink mm. and if you feel like you're going to sink there's probably a misalignment somewhere so you that tells you there's something that you have to do and I think sometimes it's almost we can put, and I, I know this world, we can put a thousand percent into something, hoping that our sheer will alone is going to make the change happen. And what we probably don't t t spend enough time recognising is, am I the right person to deliver the change in this way? Yeah. Because is the impact that I'm, I've been wanting to see for years that's not materialising, that's actually got nothing to do with the world. It's because me and this in this way is not in alignment. Mm -hmm. And that's a very hard self-reflection because for a lot of people, particularly people who put their life and soul into something, and this is why I go, it's almost like the law of sacrifice, right? For you to make the biggest gain, you have to make the biggest sacrifice. I had to sacrifice the comfort and acceptance psychologically in my mind mm -hmm. of white people to be able to push past, to speak my truth and keep going because I could have easily retreated back to safety and said nothing and just kept on going and let other black people speak their truth. Nodding my head with my mates, yeah. but actually not, but not allowing myself to be part of the, you know, part of the solution either. So every single time you just got to go through this, this, this introspection and it is about alignment with your values and your purpose. But I think particularly when you, align it with activism right and the, and the fact that activists are normally trying to solve or trying to raise a, a light on deep deep issues that in some instances society doesn't care about yeah or doesn't want to care about or you know for whatever reason so if you're going to be able to do that and if you've dedicated a lot of your time to doing that, it's not seeing the outcome. For some people, they're thinking, but I have nothing left to fall back on. Mm. And I think it's only at the moment that you make that ultimate sacrifice, which is, which is potentially to walk away because you recognise there's a misalignment, that you then give an opportunity for the alignment to come yeah. in a different sphere. Yeah. I want to very quickly move on to the next question. Oh, is this still question one? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm fine. Oh my we're, on, we're on question two. We've only got six, so we're, we're not doing too badly. How important do you feel that the work of activism is to the nation building agenda of the Black community? Um, massively important, with the caveat being all the things that we just said, right? So this yeah, yeah, idea of, of doing it from a place of humility, being humble, authenticity. Um, and it's almost like not feeling like you have to fulfill a caricature or a stereotype yeah. of what it is to be a black activist, yeah. quote unquote, whatever that even means, right? So because we've all got these connotations of, you know, and probably how many, how many people have probably I don't know, seen some of your sessions and gone, oh yeah, that's fine. They go, oh, don't you think this one's a bit too militant? You know, yeah. oh, I don't want to do tell it. Oh, oh, you know, don't. right? So, right. So if you, but, but that comes from a place of fear. So mm. that's about them. That's never about you, right? So when you're in that frame of mind, so the, the tenacious build, what we have to understand is we've all been conditioned 
we've all been drinking the same sauce. Right. Right? We've all been drinking the same sauce. What we got to see is we've got to see who's on the, the 30 day program. How are they doing? Right? We got to see who's off the sauce. How are they doing? Then we got to see who's off the plantation field. How are they getting on? Yeah. Right? Because not every day is going to be great. Right? So we know this. So you have to see because the fear that we have as um, enslaved people, and it doesn't necessarily mean just enslaved because not everybody's history is traced back to that. But this, when you think about colonialism and imperialism and the impact of being oppressed, we are not free. We have been conditioned to operate. Yeah. Like the cage doors have always been shut. Even when they're lifted, we don't know how to step out of the cage. So the importance for, 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 for activism is to see people not only talking, but people doing in their own way. Because the danger is as well that everyone thinks, it's a bit like I always say, um, particularly when people have got like business ideas and they go, oh yeah, Shreen, I'm and I said, listen, one of my bugbears is, is, is black people, we feel that the only way to make a difference for our community is to set up a community interest company. Because I'm not being funny, but Bill, Bill Gates, rolling my eyes, however, let's just use him as an example, but yeah. Bill Gates, right, will set up a company and is able to donate millions upon millions upon millions upon millions. In his mind, still make an impact, forget, him and what he does that's not the point but it's this whole idea of, and that's what I mean about conditioning yeah do you know what I mean so there's so there are so many things that we have to unpick but we can't nation build if we only exist in one lane we can't <laughs> nation build if every single thing that we do is only at a community level and we're not influencing the boardroom what are influencing big business, small business, supply chain, education, health, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's where um, I would love to see more activism yeah. in every single part of society. And for those of us who do want to massively be part of the solution, don't feel like we have to compromise to go into one acceptable lane because black people and grassroots this is not against grassroots organizations. What I'm saying is there is a stereotype yeah. that comes with black activism, which is poverty, right? Which is community center, which is, you know, on. it doesn't have to be any of those things. If it is, that's fine, but that's only part and parcel of the story. That's not a complete, that doesn't offer a complete, that doesn't, that, that's no solution as far as I'm concerned. Correct. Because essentially you are reducing yourselves to this singular position um, in society, which is, you know, that, that community Charity. interest or that poverty. Charity. Exactly. So, so you reduce yourself, you, you um, narrow down what it is that you're able to achieve. As far as I'm concerned, nation, the clues in the name, nationhood requires every single component that you've just mentioned and then some right you know? and so, I think that and I think that's where if I if I was to take a step back and and it, even in and partly this I'm very conscious that I might be quite biased because this is based on what I see the people you know the people around me mm. is there's a time and a place I always call it like because I'm I am very literal but there's a time and a place to ask for donations right but when when you're operating in that's your sphere of operation understand the consequences that also come with that that sometimes is, is not going to get you closer to nation building as you think it is right give us an example like so that you end up still being beholden to white people to donate charity to you so you're you're feeding into the idea that black people need saving that they need helping is that i'm just using that as an example i'm not saying that's the case before somebody thinks oh my god but i don't it's not to say that but i'm saying when we're reduced to just that thinking that's the only yeah. way so it's like it's almost like it's the idea that 
every black person should give up their job and go and volunteer at a grassroots organization and I'm a bit like no no no, exactly. no. you know it's, it's, it's kind of like that narrative yeah. that gets told versus this idea of going hold on how can we wealth build wh whatever that needs to look like right so what what do we need to learn whether it's wealth build as employees within organizations right well strategies strategy is the main well let's right say, yeah but do you know what i mean it's what are the yeah, strategies because if we're saying and you know and even for those of us that run our own companies it is not for everybody because this shit ain't easy neither mm. so again before we start teaching people that the road to freedom is working for yourself no because for some people it wasn't a conscious decision we choose entrepreneurship because we're fleeing oppression within organizations if the organization's fixed up a bit better, there are people who were never meant to be entrepreneurs. They're just not wired that way. I think this conversation, this type of conversation is essential for people to understand that there is that we, we need to transcend a lot of what has been placed on us and affected upon us, to done to us, um, in order to be able to actually move forward in a way that is not vengeful, as you say, in a way that is purely and resolutely focused on ourselves yes we deserve it and i think because what's you know what, what's really interesting is i re, like i had a very serious conversation with my partner who is white and estonian so he clearly loves all this and i was gonna go babe no listen i'm just gonna run this scenario past you hmm. um but if you think about um, i'm gonna use two examples right of individuals that have been ridiculed at certain points and then everyone's like oh actually do you know what they might have a point right when Akon went to Africa and he started um, his version of nation building, yeah. right? Everyone was like, oh my God, he's like, you know, why has he left his... La, 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 la. And Akon just, got, Akon just got his head down and got on with what... what yeah. Listen, I don't even know the detail of exactly what he's doing, right? Yeah. But what, what I can tell you, he got his head down and did his version of nation building. Kanye West is another one, unfortunately, but he's a good example. If he picked up a piece of land in God knows, God knows where it is, in God knows where, in out in the desert or whatever, he's doing his version of nation building, right? So there are certain, there are all different ways for us to do our versions of nation building. I, because I like the romanticism of that idea. I love the idea of pulling together with four or five black people buying a ton of land somewhere and building a version of Wakanda whatever that needs to look do you, do you understand what I'm saying yeah. that's the, but that's like because I read romance novels you know what I mean so that appeals in side fits and fantasy that appeals yeah. to that yeah. You know? yeah but the idea being that there are so many avenues that we can do so but that has to come from a place of wealth and prosperity not a place of poverty we can't have all black people operating to create charitable programs that therefore are confined within a charity status. Because all we are doing is we are re-oppressing ourselves in a system that already wants to oppress us. Because mm -hmm. when we're in a charity um, in status, concentrated, is what we're saying is, because we can't operate in a capitalist society. Whether or not you agree with capitalism or not, this is where we are. Exactly. You know? This yeah. is where we are, right? So if we're saying to, if we're trying to imply that if you're an employee, you're a sellout, that if you're a black entrepreneur, that you're a sellout, that's not focused on, you know, um, black liberation or whatever it is, you're a sellout if you're not rather than get so worried and watch what people are doing and what box you want to fit into maybe as black people we should spend more time thinking about if we are all in these different walks of lives so i'll go back to this word again what are the strategies we can leverage that we can teach people who within these spaces that still helps us nation build irrespective of whether they are um activists like in this sense like mm -hmm. our versions of what we do or they want to apply it in different ways but they still want to contribute to the freedom and liberation of black people like we don't spend enough time because we try 
it's almost like we're it's almost like we're trying to punish some people who aren't doing what we do yeah say well listen i'm doing this i'm doing this i'm doing this where are all the black people why aren't all the black people supporting me why am i why, why aren't they all you know why aren't they all donating why aren't they why are they, why are they not because well you've only given somebody one lane when, when we we all shop in amazon why do we shop with amazon because we've got choice exactly why do some of us who even though aldi is cheaper sometimes we just want to go faster yeah because i want to see more than four types of bread i'm sorry yeah. I've had enough of this same dry biscuit banana. I know all bananas are the same. I know. But I need to see the different variety. I need to yeah. see the loose pack. I need, I need, I need, right? Yeah. We like choice. So I think, again, we just, we have got to think more expansive. Um, and the proactivity comes with us thinking and doing not in reaction to how we've been treated by society, which I know it's no. very difficult. I know it's very difficult, but that's the, that's our, that is, a, it's a universal problem that actually any oppressed people have, right? So for lots of different reasons, yes. this is the problem that, you know, people in so, so lower socioeconomic groups have, of which I was council of state kid messing about in Sulu, so that was my life, you know, so I mm. was that one, I was a statistic, is, because we're always trying to pr prove people wrong because of our starting point. We're always reacting because we never have the mental capacity to make up our own plans. And therefore we're always living in, we're head down and you can see it because it almost feels like desperation. It is desperation. And this is the distinction that I think is very important. It's a dichotomy between resistance or transcendence, because I think, if you choose to resist, you are constantly battling. It is that eternal battle against what is being done to you. So you're in reaction mode, always battling. If you have transcended, you come to a point where, yes, that stuff is happening, but that doesn't become the nucleus around which you then um, focus your energies and efforts and your activities. The focus needs to shift. There needs to be that paradigm shift so that we actually begin to understand ourselves first differently because it's only from then that we are able to start effectively nation building. And activism and resistance, for me, aren't necessarily interchangeable. Yes. Because activism can still exist in a space of transcendence. Correct. Correct. You know? abs so abs and that is it. See, look how you said it so much more better than I did. But that's my point. Mm -hmm. Because, and I think this, 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 you have to let go of something. Do you know what I mean? You have to let go because it's, it's, it, it goes back to what we're saying about, you know, fundamentally, you do the work that you do. We do the work that we do because it, it comes from a place of love. Yeah. Meaning we want, we want to be better as individuals. We want the world to be better. We want people to be better. And, and we want our black people to be given what is owed to us. Absolutely. All of that comes from a place of love, you know, you know um, all, absolutely. all of that. And I think it doesn't matter. Um, and I think this is where you get out of the, the blame game. You know, it's their fault, it's their fault, it's their fault. And it's a bit like, well, yeah, you can spend all your time doing that if you want. But if you're spending Wait all your time energy. doing that, what are you not doing? Exactly. Exactly. You know, who, 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 who can you have that's like, you know, who is falling out of the sky for you, offering to help you do X, Y, and Z? And you're thinking, oh, my God, where did this person come from? Where do these people come from, right? That's the space you want to be in. If you're in that space, it's because something you're doing has transcended... Um, even if you're focused on something that is inherently painful or, you know, like racism, for example, I have people coming out of thin air and going, you know, I'll do this for you. I'll do that. And I'm thinking, where the hell does that come from? Exactly. Honestly. And it's because you have, you know, you've transcended. And I think the other thing is as well, is that there's got to be growth. So if there is no growth in, in, um, what you're doing the impact that you're making to a point is quite tangible if somebody was to look at you now and feel like they 
you're you are the same and doing the same thing as a year before you're, you're not in alignment then because if yeah. you're in alignment there should be some growth yeah. alignment doesn't mean doing the same thing alignment means there's less resistance because it's like the, te- the, the plates are shifting every time and they're rebalancing but without you sometimes even knowing yeah. or consciously it's very easy for you to to just reshift things and do. that's what moving with alignment means moving with purpose it means not that it's perfect not that it's easy not that you can just sit back and let everything happen and so I the need to fight in that sense like we got fight of course we have but it's a different it's a different energy that you're bringing when you're doing this activism it's a different energy um but what you're saying is the starting point is about what I want not what you have done to me first absolutely absolutely I (laughs) share I don't like the right moment. So um, moving to question four, we're nearly there. Um, Why do you think activism has received a bad press historically? Is fundamentally because activists are here to challenge, right, the status quo. And we've always got to remember is for those in anything, if it suits its purpose, right, people don't want things to change. So the easiest way is to ha- is to not have people pay attention to activists, is to make activism sound like it's people who are hogging trees all the time, chaining themselves, what's it? Chaining themselves to trees. Who, what's the, I do laugh. What's the guy who's digging tunnels in bloody, you know, messing up the tunnels for um, the train line going up north um, in Houston and he's like been bedding in the sewer thing so they can't, so they I physically no don't. Have you ever heard, oh my God, what's this guy's name? Um, What's this track? Um, what's the anyway? The building this train thing to Leeds. You know this is fast train. So we got, yeah. the, I've got we got the fast train now. What we got? The high speed. Yeah, the high yeah, speed. Yeah. They're doing the version for the north, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. This one guy, I'm sure he's got ginger hair because they always seem to have ginger hair. These guys, that do this. <laughs> and he is like been sleeping in some tunnel in Houston mm. um, for ages. And then even when they thought they were getting, so they got him and I think his partner out. But then he managed to get back in and then barricaded himself in. And then they can't do nothing. So they can't build nothing. So yeah. he has brought like a multi-million pound something to a stop. Or because my yeah. man want to sleep in a sewer to prove yeah. a point. Yeah. That's activism. So we hear, which does make me smile because I'm thinking, do you know what? <laughs> I, I know there's consequences, but listen, like you got no idea that you one person with your unwashed self yeah. is like causing chaos out here yeah. in these streets. Yeah. But um, that is a good example. Um, actually, I was spinning it in a positive way is that, Sometimes it doesn't take critical mass to ground a hole. It takes a strategic pin. This guy, one guy with his little marga self and his little whatever, one guy yeah. had everyone shook yeah. because they can't do nothing. Yeah. All because of where he placed himself really strategically, how he even worked out that by being in these bloody sewers, I must find it and send it to you because it is quite... It's funny, yeah, but there's a uh, story in that, mm. in terms of, so we're always thinking, you know, we've got to do, we've got to do what we've got to do. And all one guy just went in, found a space, and then everything had to come to a stop. You can't do nothing until he's, he's gone out. So there is something about the narrative around activism. Um, but also, I do think, just like in anything, like, you just don't need to get caught up in the label. Because it, it, my other thing is, is just like, you know, I could happily spend the next year of my life never being called an activist. It an doesn't activist. change anything. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And I think so. And, but it goes back to what we were saying about it being like the, what's the driving force behind you doing what you do? Because it is, it, if it is because you want to be seen as an activist, like I see people, it's really funny. I see people um, in the social media sphere going, I'm a visionary. I'm an activist, I'm a campaigner. And do you know all that says to me? You, you're getting gassed. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that says to me, yes. you're getting gassed. Right? That's really polite. That's really, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's exactly what it says. Yeah, that's very polite. I'm just like, you're getting gassed. Because when you see it one time, you're like, okay. If other people call you that, that's, that's your business. Yeah. Right? If that's your title and your thing, that's fine. But when you start using that as a, I'm a visionary, and so you got like that, you know, I'm a I'm a um, campaigner for anti-racism. I'm a visionary for anti-racism, yeah. and I'm and and when people go, so Shireen, what are you? A mum of two kids. Like, yeah. you know, my 13-year-old daughter don't want to do what she's told my three-year-old, and my partner's like can't pay attention. 
that's my frame of reference. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? My roots need doing, do you know what I mean? And I'm still like messing about with different dyes to keep my head, you know, that's my frame of reference. Absolutely. The labels, because yeah. it doesn't come from that place. So what that tells me when I see things like that is you're more focused on the kudos, which means you're driven to be liked. Mm. Well, let me tell you, if you really want to make a difference, be prepared to be unliked, Absolutely. disliked. Yeah. That's the word. Absolutely. Be prepared to be disliked. Because Absolutely. trust and believe, anyone, everyone, even the people that you think you're helping are going to have something to say. Mm-hmm. And if you're doing it for the right reasons, you will just, like water, you'll keep flowing. If yeah. you get caught up in that, you start readdressing for clicks, likes and shares right and then all of a sudden there's misalignment all of a sudden you not only you're not making the impact all of a sudden you're not enjoying it or it's not getting the reaction that you thought and 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 you're not getting the opportunities to even make off you go and then you're going how does this happen when we could have all told you I could have from from this person's put in vision I thought to myself no and what this person don't realize they're desperate to do a little piece of something from me what they don't realize the second I saw that's how they're labeling me and them can't deal because they're not authentic. Yeah, yeah. You can call me Sister Shireen all you want, right? You can call me royalty. You understand what I'm saying to you all you want? No, because from when I see you calling yourself visionary, yeah. from when I see uh, you're labelling yourself, which means the label is more important more than the important. work and the impact yeah. you're trying to make, me and you can't deal because we're not on the same vibration. Yes. Yeah. So the next question is, on a very sort of um, basic, um, sort of prosaic day-to-day level, is there a sort of form of activism you think people can be engaged in um, that, that doesn't necessarily demand too much of them or make them feel as though they're going too deep or too conscious with things? Yeah, so I would say, if we remember that the way that I defined activism, which is um, consistency mm. and, da- and, and daily practice, is... If every single day when you wake up, right, and you're thinking about what it is that you want to do, what you want to accomplish, what you're trying to go after, is firstly to ask yourself one question. Am I doing this because I want to or am I doing this because I have to, right? So the activism, and obviously there's, you know, before people say, yeah, I, I don't want to, I don't want to take my child, but you know, I got it. So I'm not talking about stuff that we've got. I'm not talking about responsibility stuff. I'm just talking about life's aspirations and what you're going after impact purpose, all the stuff that you're trying to do is make a conscious decision to do what you want to do, which is going back to this idea of proactivity yeah. versus doing what you have to do, which is in reaction to something. Because straight away, that is shifting to putting you back in the driving seat rather than you being in the back of the Uber and the Uber driver's taking you wherever. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So yes. like, is this a me thing mm. or is this a pressure thing? Yeah. Like, which is it? And then the second thing is, if you've got the answers to that question and you're like, wicked, this is what I want to do, but now I'm not sure if I should do it, where does that fear come from and acknowledge it Mm. because sometimes the things that we don't want to do is not because we can't do it it's not it's there's some level of discomfort but we don't often spend enough time working out what that discomfort is when we understand the the deep layers of conditioning that we have because we've all been drinking the same sauce yeah you don't wake up like this. I keep saying to people, I did not wake up like this. Yeah. this. Right? No, Beyonce didn't wake up like this either, actually, despite what we all may think. But she didn't. Nobody woke up like this. Meaning Absolutely. we are the product of aggregated gains day in and day out. Wow. So every single day I have to say to myself, like, Shireen, you need to go and you know, I don't know, tell, tell people you're doing the, your conference. Oh no, but they're going to think I'm getting too big for my boots. Go and tell them to do it. Oh no, they're going to go to think. Where does that come from? Yeah. Oh, because, right? So what do you have to do? Get on and do it. Yeah. yeah. Aggregate, aggregated gains. Not, don't worry about this whole big overnight business. So because that ain't it. Mm. Every single day, because every time you're building, you're building, you're building, and it's the aggregation, the compound interest. Yeah. 
compounded effect is what is going to keep driving. That's that's why. So I have a compound effect to where I am now. I didn't start with forty two thousand followers on LinkedIn. I started off with three. Yeah. My focus wow. was not get into 42,000 followers my focus was doing a video and making sure that my mom didn't tell me off because I swear to you that much that, yeah. that was all my focus what you know and just make it oh am I oh, do I say this no and every single time going I've got to unwind my conditioning around what's acceptable for a black woman to do or not to do um how I need to show up as a black woman in business how I just need to show up as an individual in business how I can talk about racism versus not talk about race so I, I got to go through this loop every single day yeah where I spend my time who I spend my time with how do I prioritize this when I can't do that who, right so every single day I've got to make conscious decisions so am I doing it because I want to or because I have to if I have to do it is do I have to have to responsibility yeah. fine crack on if not right if I want to do it but I'm now feeling blocked what's driving that then we go yeah gosh so let me move on to the penultimate question how within that space then um can we hope to nurture guard incubate our activism because by your de- activism, by your definition, I mean, how do we guard that? How do we safeguard that and protect that? I think it's just by doing what I said before. It's it's conscious decisions daily. Because what you because by the time that you and the reason why I say it's got to be daily is um, because by the time that you consciously clock that something's not in alignment a lot of things have already happened. You've just been unconscious to it. Mm. So it becomes, it's it's not that it's too late. It's more work to unravel. Okay. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? So that's, that's, that's the, you know, that's my thinking um, around that. So for example, I'm super, super busy, super, super busy. So in theory, I could only give myself, um, I don't know, let's say like every two months I go, right, this weekend is going to be my reading weekend and I'm going to do, and I'm going to work on myself and I'm going to do, and you know, I'm going to burn my sage. I'm going to, you know, do my intentions. I'm going to do all of this stuff. I can't live like that Mm. because that's two months of accumulation. How can I, how can I expect to, for a start, how can I live for a date that's not promised? Only today is promised. Right. So all, so I have today in my control when I wake up, you know, every moment we've got in our control. So I can at least focus on today. And even if I do 2% of what I plan to do in two months time, by the time I get to two months time, look at what I've done in that two months because I've done a little bit rather than leaving everything. And no mind me, by the time I wait for two months, I'm, I'm too tired anyway, I can't do nothing. So I got to do, and then all oh, something else, bright, shiny, magpie. Oh, look. <laughs> Colours, colourful. <laughs> What frankincense is in rocks now, and I can burn it with the sage leaves. What is this? You know, and so and off. I'm off. What's the, what's the charcoal thing? Oh my god, it burns it all quicker. Now I've got to have that, you know. So I'm one of these ones, magpie. Right? You know what I mean? All all of this before you know it, before you know it. So it's it's just this idea of 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 not putting pressure. Yeah. Also understanding it is it's it's the sum of micro actions. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. You know? Yeah. No, thank you. And and very finally, because we're not too far off our timing, actually, so let me put very quickly just ask the last one. Um, please complete the sentence, my activism is defined by, or it's inspired by, not defined by, inspired by. My activism is inspired by the way I want to live. Fantastic. It. and that has to be it that know. has to be it that has to when be you see it. me with my house in kenya lord have mercy please please lord my spirit <laughs> please take me did you say that you traced your ancestry back to kenya yeah 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 apparently yeah, yeah that's where that's where my um god my yeah ancestors before they were enslaved people that's where apparently they were taken from yeah yeah, yeah. bless you thank you. you all right take care shireen you too you too all right see you later bye yeah.